Greetings and blessings, dear friends in the spirit 111. It's Eddie Luisi. How are you? So the other day, I finished work. I'm in the parking garage waiting for my car. And these two men are walking. It's an outside parking lot. So two men are walking the street. This one guy screams, ah! And then he goes down on the floor and he, and he crouches. And I'm like about to like go over and help him or call 911. And he gets up and he says, I feel good. <laughs> and he starts dancing. And all of us, all of us watching start clapping. It was like, it was the best thing. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, so right now, at this particular moment, one of our dear friends in the spirit, Maria Peterson, is at the ER room. Um, we're part of a, of, a, of a group, a Facebook private message group, and she messaged me early in the morning that she was having pains in her kidneys. And I guess it must be a recurring thing. And I said, go to the hospital. And she waited like an hour, but at 6.20 a.m., um, she said she's going to the ER. So let's say a prayer for Maria, all those at the hospital taking care of her. Her son is alone now. Um, so God bless her son. Um, he's older, so it's not like a little kid, but um, God bless them. Let's keep them in our prayers. Also, over the weekend, a dear friend in the spirit, 111, a dear friend of Jamming with Jesus at St. Peter's, a dear friend of the Joy Mass, Tony G, um, passed away. He was only 64 years old, a great guy, a, a, a dear friend, a man filled with joy. And... Um, church musician, done a lot of stuff with, with kids and young adult ministry and retreats and CCD. He was a serviceman in the Air Force. So, Tony G, I love you. Oh, my dear Joy Mass friends, Jam with Jesus, I love you guys too. So let's keep his soul and his family left behind in our prayers. Um, this morning, his family is having a memorial service in Queens and um, this past week, I think it was Thursday morning, there was an actual funeral, Catholic funeral in Pennsylvania, because that's where he's been living the past 11 years. So um, God bless you, Tony G, and um, we love you. Um, also, a dear friend in the spirit, Beth Deacon, she was up early and she wrote me a, a message saying, I came up, I got up early to listen to your message. Where is it? <laughs> Here it is, Beth. Um, but maybe you got up early to because I told you about Marie, and uh, maybe you got up early to pray for her. Because she needed Maria, she needs her, our prayers. So, today's message I am going to call The Greatness of Your Own Life. The Greatness of Your Own Life. So, I'm going to read from Daily Practice Sacred Reading and Meditation, One Spirit Learning Center. And like most of the stuff that I'm reading from, I mean, you could you could sign on and get these newsletters and readings yourself if you like. This is from Robert Muller. Use every letter you write, every conversation you have, every meeting you attend to express your fundamental beliefs and dreams. Affirm to others the vision of the world you want. You are free, immensely powerful source of life and goodness. Affirm it, spread it, radiate it. Think day and night about it and you will see a miracle happen. The greatness of your own life. Dun, 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 dun. Pretty cool stuff, huh? Um, this is, I, I printed it. A dear childhood friend, um, Pete Valone, and a church musician, um, saw this reading. Uh, I guess this is a reflection he gets from St. John Bosco, and he uh, sent it to me, and he said, it reminded me of you. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> so I'm going to read this. Um, from Hebrews 10.24, you must consider how to rouse one another to love and do good works. Circus performers had a lifelong effect on the young John Bosco. Enthralled by their masterful agility, Bosco was soon entertaining an audience 
with his own practiced circus skills. In time, Saint John Bosco became a well-loved priest who attracted many followers into his charitable organization and the seminary. As John Bosco learned early from the circus troupe, people will be more interested in participating in an action if those involved radiate joy in doing good works. Just, just an aside, I mean, Tony G um, was part of our joy mass, and, and I wasn't there at the funeral, but Kathy Corbin, a dear friend, and, and his family, I've been chatting with his niece, said the number one thing that the priest kept on saying about Tony G was the joy that he radiates, radiated. So think about that. Radiate joy in doing good works. Of course, we can also identify this form of humble discipleship as being Christ-like. As disciples, we are called to share the love of Christ with others in our environment. Naturally, our relationships will be messy at times. Let's remember, grousing and blaming are not attractive or productive. I don't know what grousing means. The better path is one of prayer, patience, and practicing what Christ taught us. Love them even when they are most unlovable. Sometimes I'm unlovable, friends in the spirit. <laughs> Eddie Louise is not perfect. Well, at least in my human, I'm not perfect. In my divine, yep, perfection. So this is um, the three, C, the four C's I got uh, uh, like a month ago at Montvale Evangelical Free Church. Pastor Sam did a whole talk on this. Consistency in my daily walk, contentment in my circumstances, courage in my calling, confidence in the goodness of God. Interesting, huh? And uh, just a little aside, last weekend, Super Bowl, right? And Tom Brady was chatting with Michael Strahan. They did an interview together. And you know I work with Michael Strahan about his six soap Super Bowl victories. And Michael was asking about that. And, and Brady just said, I'm blessed. I am blessed. You see my, my tattoo? blessed. I'm blessed. You're blessed, dear friends in the spirit. What a humble response, a humble attitude to say that you're blessed, you know? And um, not that I'm great and I'm fabulous and I'm good looking and I'm smart and I'm talented. I mean, you know, you got some of those things, so do I. But, um, but to say I'm blessed. I'm blessed and grateful. I like the word grateful too. Oh, I got, I got that tattoo. Me and my daughter, Olivia, my 19-year-old, who is currently studying abroad, she just texted me this morning. She and a few friends are getting another tattoo. I said, are you getting a picture of Dad's face? I don't think so. We'll find out, uh, and I'll let you know next week if I remember what tattoo she got. Um, so another thing that, that I could possibly be, well, I could, I could be blessed with in the future, but in the past I've been blessed. I've done some prison ministry, um, something called REC, R-E-C, Residence Encounter Christ. And I've served the men at Sing Sing, Greenhaven, Downstate, Otisville, Eastern, maybe Sullivan, I don't remember. I know like five or six different places I've been in the prisons. Well, at uh, Montvale Evangelical Free Church, church my wife Liz and I have been going Sunday mornings. It's a Christian church. Um, once a month, the fourth Sunday, they have a, 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 a prison ministry. Uh, the men of the parish, um, they go to Sing Sing, which is in Ossining, New York. And there's a man by the name of Patrick who's been leading that for the past 10 years. We had a conversation yesterday, so he's going to send me some info, some paperwork. I'm going to fill it out, and we're going to see if this is God's will for me to get back into the prisons. Beth Deacon, a dear friend in the spirit, um, who's a math teacher at Keokuk High School, um, is writing a book because she did prison ministry. She taught in the prisons. 
So when that book comes out and she gives it to me, I'm going to hold it up. But um, here's a math teacher who's writing a book. God bless you, Beth. Um, right? We could all do great things in our lives, dear friends in the spirit. Um, so I will keep you posted on that. And if there are any men out there, Christian men, because this is a Christian fellowship that live in the, you know, the Rockland County, uh, North Jersey area, Ossining, Westchester, that would like to be part of the team. Um, private message me or do a reply. We're going to try to get a team of 12 men, hmm, the 12 disciples of Christ, on, um, to go to Sing Sing once a month, the fourth week, the fourth Sunday of every month. So let me know about that. Another plug for Mount Vale Church, Brian Curry did a CD. Actually, I think he did this like, I don't know, five, ten years ago, but his wife saw me in church and kind of dropped it on my lap. And he's a church musician, guitarist. It's all original music. And um, so, so folks, there, there's so much that we can do to spread the love of God. So I am going to read something from the Christopher's Three Minutes a Day, Getting Things Done. Enthusiasm is the key to getting things done. For instance, it was Joshua Lionel Cohen who came up with the idea for the flashlight, but it took someone else's enthusiasm to put it to use. Hmm, interesting. Shall I read on? Cohen made a slender battery and put it in a tube with a light bulb at the end. It could be stuck into a flower pot to illuminate the plant. But Cohen was busy with other inventions, like his Lionel Trains, that's his middle name, and had little interest in the flashlight. Conrad Hubert was so enthusiastic about Cohen's invention that he quit his restaurant business to promote it. Cohen transferred the rights to Hubert, who consequently found a new use for the device and manufactured it in 1898 as the first flashlight. It was Hubert's enthusiasm, as much as Cohen's idea, that gave us the flashlight. Keep that in mind the next time you get a bright idea. <laughs> so, this is great. And, and Friends in the Spirit 111, you know, this is, this is some ministry that I started, but you're part of it. So if you have ideas to make this grow, let's do it. Let's make it grow. Let's touch more lives, right? From Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse 14 and 16. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Give glory. Give thanks, right? Gratitude. Inspire me, Jesus, to bring the light of my loving belief in you to each moment of each day the little prayer at the end. So I'm going to go back to the November issue of Science of Mind, like I promised, and I'm going to read a couple different stories in there, and then I have one more last thing, and then I am done. Oh, and actually, later on today, I'm driving back into New York City. What am I, crazy? I've just been there five days. I am actually part of a casting team and a dear friend of mine, um, James Carter, we call him Prez, get it, James Carter, Prez. His dear friend, Jerry Robach, wrote a play years ago that actually they performed at the Beacon Theater. So this was a top-notch play with top-notch actors. They're having a casting call today. Over 65 actors are coming in um, because they're in development for writing a sitcom. And I'm there to help out. And I don't know what capacity, but I guess I'm a professional being in the business for almost 40 years. And so I'm going to go there for a few hours. So pray for, for me, my guidance, that I could help out this process. Pray for uh, Prez and Jerry and, and all the actors coming into audition. Let us um, do some good stuff in this world. Don't forget I'm, I'm the logo. That's my bookmarker. What are you saying to yourself? 
Maya Angelou wrote, a bird doesn't sing because it has an answer. It sings because it has a song. We should sing our success song no matter how the situation looks. This is what secures the victory. Many people discount the weight of words. Words have liberated people, but they have also limited people and their potential to live productive and prosperous lives. What we, re what we say really does matter. It creates and shapes our every experience. In the scripture above, Joel shares some powerful principles. I didn't read that. Let me read that. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong, from Joel 3.10. In the scripture above, Joel shares some powerful principles. First, we are taught to use what we have in order to do what we need to do. He told the children of Israel to beat their plowshares into swords and their pruning hooks into spears. You already have everything you need to succeed. You already have everything you need to succeed. Are you, are you hearing this? You just need to develop it and deploy it. What you need is inside of you, not outside of you. Put it to use. You are equipped for excellence. He goes on to tell them, let the weak say, I am strong. Just a little aside, we sing a song at St. Peter's called Give Thanks, and there's a part, let the weak say, I am strong, and we yell it out. And there's three, 400 people in the church, and we yell it out, I am strong. Again, what you say to yourself matters. Don't let your conditions define you. Define your conditions instead. Take control of your circumstances by the words you choose to speak or write, if you're a writer. Let your words flow from what you believe, not what you see, for what you see is not always reality. What you see, is, what you see could be a farce or a, fa a facade, but what you believe is truth, the basis and building block for your future. The beginning of your Pending success or failure. Make sure if it's positive and make sure it's productive. And the affirmation or prayer. I speak positive, faith-filled words to myself about myself and watch them unfold in my life. I'm going to read one more. Believe it into existence. There's a little quote from Ralph Hodgson. Hodgson. Some things have to be believed to be seen. And from science of mind, as much as we can believe will be done unto us. Is there something you've been wanting and wishing for, but it hasn't manifested yet? Could it be due to a lack of belief? If we really want to check our belief, all we have to do is consider our actions. Action follows belief. We sit in chairs without even checking the durability and sturdiness of the parts. Well, sometimes I do. Because we believe it's going to hold us. We don't even think twice about it. We just act. Why not believe in your desires, dreams, and goals the same way? Just act on them. Start moving toward them and watch them move closer to you. Mary K. Ash, entrepreneur and pioneer in the direct cosmetic sales industry, said, Aerodynamically, the bumblebee shouldn't be able to fly, but the bumblebee doesn't know it. <laughs> so it goes on flying anyway. The bumble believes it can fly, so it goes on flying without any regard for physical conditions or physical limitations. What about you? What about me? I think about this often. And um, I got a couple things that I have brewing up for, for me. And um, I'm going to be like a bumblebee and I'm going to fly. 
If a bumblebee has the good sense to ignore its shortcomings and play to its strengths, why not you? Maximize your strengths and minimize your weaknesses. Believe in yourself, plan to succeed, and plan to win. Florence Scovel Shin, author of The Game of Life and How to Play It, was right. Life is a game, and we are limited only by our beliefs. To be more, to do more, and have more, we must believe in more. We will have exactly what we are able to believe. We can accomplish almost anything within our ability if we start by believing we can. And the affirmation is, I believe in me and the God power within me. My heart's desires are possible. The highest and best is unfolding in my life now. So the last thing I'm going to read is from The Secret. See, friends of the spirit, I mix a lot of different faiths, spiritualities, different things. So it's not just one path, right? There's multiple things that could help you on this earth. Gratitude can transform your life. I mentioned that a couple of times, right? Remember, if you are criticizing, you're not being grateful. If you are blaming, you're not being grateful. If you are complaining, you're not being grateful. If you are feeling tension, you're not being grateful. If you are rushing, you're not being grateful. If you are in a bad mood, you're not being grateful. Gratitude can transform your life. Are you allowing minor things to get in the way of your transformation? and the life you deserve. Thank you, Rhonda Parn, from the Secret Daily Teaching. So dear friends of the Spirit 101, when I looked at the clock, it was 2211, pretty, pretty wild. I like to see little signs, little God winks with, with numbers and messages. And um, so I thank you for listening to this message. Um, if it has touched you, then um, do something, <laughs> right? You are great. You have the greatness of God inside of you. So help others, touch others, do things right, volunteer, do music, you know, help, help a friend in need, pray. So I mentioned a lot of different things in this talk. So if, if one thing grabbed you, then awesome. If several, awesome. Don't forget to share your faith with family and friends. Thank you.